Hi everybody, welcome back to KK Builds. My name is KK. As you can see in the last video, we um, automated Lego trains in a way that they um, are going from A to B without us touching the iPad. This program that we made um, does just that. So trains go up the hill there uh, until they had it hit a yellow patch, go back over over there until they hit a red patch and then vice versa again, right? So this is a loop that keeps running until the batteries run out, I guess. And it's, uh, as you can see, it gives a bit of a uh, dynamic to the city, right? I like to watch a lot of model railway YouTube people and they always have trains running in the background. And that's something I have now as well. So thank you for that inspiration. I think it adds something to all this, right? I hope that you can hear me okay because it makes quite a lot of noise, right? But I think it's fine. Now this was the second video in this series and in this one, the third one, we are going to check out um, like a cool city scene that you can make using this technology, right? So unfortunately this means that we have to tear down this scene that we already made, the mock-up of the uh, industrial zone and make a new mock-up for a station area. So let's get working on that right now. Now the scene that you see before you right over here is something that we made up um, trying to find a way to incorporate harbors into our city without it taking up too much space, I guess. Obviously the boats and the cranes and docks all take a lot of space. We don't have that much space. I mean, we have a lot of space, but not that much in the way that you can have the boats all like in this direction and we just put them over uh, in the length, right? So we have a little bit of water on the uh, edge of the table here, put the boats on there, dock right behind it, safe space. Um, I made some pictures of this scene, obviously, so that I don't forget, and I quite like what we did here, so we can uh, use that sometime in the future. As for now, we need this space in order for the next uh, demonstration, if you will. So what I would like to do is have a um, passenger station right where that yellow crane is uh, approximately, have the train come in, stop at the station, wait for the other train to come in, stop at the station as well, and then the other one can take off again. So uh, let's try that. But first of all, we need to make space. So obviously um, in this Lego room, we keep shuffling things around because we don't quite know what we're doing, I guess and also uh, because we continuously have new ideas. So that's what you're seeing right here, this process. Um, yeah, little time-lapse coming in right now. Would you look at all this track space? Here's the station. Obviously it's uh, always a mock-up in this city, right? And then we continue on here. And here's the end of the line. So what we need to do, here's where the trains need to stop, right? Or I guess you could argue if this one, this line stops here, but we'll uh, do that anyway. So maybe we'll take blue as a color uh, for stopping. Put that on the track. Again, we put it in this direction so that uh, uh, the color sensor has more time to read it. Then we put red over here. I don't want to put it all the way on the end of the line because the train passes over it. It takes the signal to stop and then it stops over here, for instance. Not that it shoots off the line, right? And then we have yellow as before. And we put those over here where the trains are. Those over here. And now we have to come up with a program that, um, that supports these colors. That makes the trains go to A from A to B and stop at the station and continue on their way again. So let's try that out, right? I'm not gonna lie, this looks pretty good and it took me only one try. 
So as you can see, the trains uh, do pick up on the different colors and they act accordingly. Um, the only thing that I found is that if you use, for instance, blue here, let me show you what it does. It stops there, so this is fine, but on the way back, as soon as this one gets here, so that one goes over there, and then it comes back, right? The green train, look what it does. So it scans it. Oh, it didn't scan it now. Oh no, stop, before it goes all wrong. What I tried to say was that if, if it crosses this blue, blue square when it comes from this direction, from under the pedestrian bridge, it reads it, it breaks, and then it goes all the way over here and it stops right about here. So you see what's the problem, right? The passengers cannot get out here. So that's something in, you can uh, put into consideration. So we may have to not only use the blue square for when they go this side, but use a different color and put it over here, for instance, if it comes back and then it breaks all the way over here and then the cars line up, line up with the platform, right? So that's a, that's a thing that we could do. Let's put this one back. For some reason, it runs really rough now. I don't know why. I think maybe something changed or maybe the wheels are, I don't know. Let me try again. So turn that on, brakes, brakes, brakes over there, brakes over there again, comes back, and again it misses the blue. So blue might not be an optimal color here, but you get the idea, right? So it's strange how it um, works on the first try and then it comes back. Maybe this is too dark over here. That could be a thing. Back in the shadow of the bridge. Let's pull this one back. Oh, we crashed into the station. I'm sorry, passengers. That was not my... I didn't want to do that. So there we go. Let's try it one more time. There it goes. Stops right over there, so that's fine. Go that way, stops over there again. That one stops over there as well. Go back. See, now it stops at blue, but blue is not there. So, <laughs> well, it is there, but as I told you before, the braking is kind of annoying. And then here are the yellow patches. So, let me close that for a second. So, put them in the original position again. Obviously, you need to start from the uh, from the beginning here, right? So if we take a look at what we did, motor A runs at, at 50 until it hits blue, stops again, motor 2 starts until it hits blue, stops again, then it continues on to th uh, the red square, and this is just a long line of what we just did, right? Pretty straightforward. I guess there are smarter ways to do this, but this uh, works pretty well for me for now. So what I would like to do is build a variation on this. So what if the train only stops when it comes from this side, right? So it stops here, then goes off to that side again, and then it comes back, but it crosses on this side, right? So it goes over there, it stops over there, maybe have a switch here and then go over here then a switch there again and then off to that side that would be cool right let's try that out we made some adjustments and this works fine now so that's really cool and i will show you what it does so if we hit play here sorry over here let's see this run for a second shall we train stops at the station, another train comes in, doesn't stop at the station. It waits for a second or five. Let's see, and then this one should be going again, and it does. And we wait for the other one to come. I 
I think this is pretty cool, isn't it? I can watch this all day, how about you? Again, till the batteries run out, I guess. <laughs> Here we go. We've got a functioning uh, little train thingy going on. And I'm very happy about this because this is actually what we wanted to do, right? This is the whole goal of this train automation thing. We don't have to touch anything. I can just uh, play a little content creator over here with my camera and such and the trains do their things. Now, this is not going to be the end result of this. Um, as mentioned earlier, I got a lot of um, replies asking people on uh, making more um, sophisticated code, I guess, in the app. We'll save that for some other time. For now, for this video, I think our goal is achieved. We have a nice little scene that um, works and that we can use in our city whenever we, um, I guess whenever we finish the Stutgate station, because that's what we want to use this for. So there's gonna be a station over there, in the back, and where all this junk is, there's gonna be a theme park. So we have the station over there, and then a tunnel. The train goes into the tunnel, you don't see it anymore. And that's where one of the color patches is going to be so that it turns around again. Or reverses, I should say, because it doesn't turn around. And the same on the other side. The train leaves into a tunnel. We don't see it anymore. It waits for a certain number of time. And then it comes out again. And it does that over and over and over again. And um, with Stutgate being somewhere close to where the ship is, that's going to make for a very cool scene, I think. And as long as this is running and we don't have to do much about it, I'm very happy. So key takeaways, right? Um, the colors can be a little bit tricky. We, um, in the code, oh, sorry, I almost fell. So in the code, we use these uh, hourglass things. You can use those to uh, make it wait for a certain amount of time. And in my case, it's five seconds, right? So um, that is because the train sometimes when it has to reverse over here, like on the red patch, um, it crosses over the same red patch again. So you want to make sure that before it reads the color again, it waits. So it starts off running. We put the timer on five, so it's well over the red patch, and then it starts looking for red again, right? So that's one of the points that you need to worry about. Then, not everything has to be a smart or app control, I guess. Using switches like these, and thinking about your uh, train layout in advance, you can actually do very cool stuff, because we are not touching the switch, but the train goes the other track anyway, so that it makes room for the other uh, train that comes in. So use what you have, right? We don't have to um, automate everything, I guess, but because we have the train switching tracks here, it gives it more of a uh, uh, realistic thing, I guess, because here where we live, we have only a small train station, and trains need to be able to pass each other as well, even when there's a single line coming in. So that's what we're doing here. Very cool. So another point I would say is obviously the colors themselves that you use, right? We've seen that before. Sometimes blue doesn't really work. Uh, yellow I found works pretty good. It's a very good color to use. Uh, Especially, I guess, with my background color of like the, the dark green. Um, I think it's all about contrast and maybe the blue is not so good for that. And then red works uh, very well as well. So yeah, colors, use what you have. Maybe use some um, hourglass thingies in the app so that it waits for another instruction. And then maybe in the future we can um, expand upon this with uh, smarter code I guess or other I don't know functionality obviously what you could do 
you could motorize uh, switches like these, right? I've seen videos on that as well. And if you use the powered up ones, the powered up motors, you can use those in the app as well. So whenever the train runs on the red patch, make the switch go into another direction. I don't know, I'm just, um, I'm just thinking out loud here, right? But what a cool picture this is. Yeah, there it goes. I'm very happy with this. Let me know what you think in the comments and what you would want to see as well. So there you have it, automated Lego trains in your Lego city. Um, I'm very happy with this result, as I said. So uh, part number three of a three part series so far. <laughs> Maybe we'll do another one in the near future about more sophisticated things that you can do with the, with the app and the code and all that stuff. I'm not really a programmer by any means, but I think we could work something out. There is a very cool like PDF file with all the different uh, coding blocks that you can use. So I'll share that in the description. So look out for that if you want to learn more about this. Um, for now, the first part was about how can we use the color sensor. The second one was how can we control two trains using the color sensors. And the third one, as you see here, Make a little scene that works for your city. I'm very happy about this and I'm curious to know what you think about it. So um, the next video is going to be more city building, I think. I'm not sure yet. We'll see. Um, if you cannot wait for the next video to drop, there should be a video over here and over here that you can watch. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like the video if you like it. And I hope to see you next week. Uh, have a nice weekend and see you later, bye bye.